I thought it might be useful to run through some examples of some pretty basic derivatives, mostly examples using the power rule or possibly the chain rule in preparation for the upcoming test. So let's take a look at those. Uh, first one, basic derivative. You're just finding the derivative of 2 over x cubed. Remember that we haven't discussed how to find a derivative if you have a variable in the denominator of a fraction. You're going to need to rewrite this using exponents. Of course, if I move this to the top, I end up with 2x to the negative third. Now I can apply the power rule. Power rule says I can multiply my exponent by my coefficient. So that's going to give me negative 6x. And remember, you drop your power by 1, which takes my power down to negative 4. So negative 6x to the negative 4th. Of course, if you wanted to rewrite that with a positive exponent, you could also write that as negative 6 over x to the 4th. Either one of those answers would be acceptable in most cases. Second example, um, basic derivative here, basic power rule. 2 times 4 is 8. x is going to be to the first power when I drop my exponent by 1. The second, remember that that's 5 times x to the 1 half power. Okay, so when I multiply 1 half times 5, I'm going to get 5 halves x. And remember, I have to drop my power by 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And finally, the oldest trick in the book. Notice that's not x to the 10th power. That is 2 to the 10th power. That is a constant value. The derivative of any constant is always equal to 0. I am done. That is my derivative. And the third example. You'll notice that I'm taking the derivative of a seventh power. I don't want to have to expand this entire statement, so I'm going to use the power rule. I have essentially a value that's being taken to the seventh power. I'll take the derivative of that, the outer function, and then I'll multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So 7 times my coefficient of 1 gives me 7. It's seven times the same thing that I had before. 4x minus 2, I drop my power by 1. So you'll notice all I did was multiply, drop my exponent by 1, and now I have that inside function. I have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Derivative of the inside function is just going to be 4. You could do a little bit of simplifying here. I would probably add or in this case, I would multiply the 7 and the 4, and I'd write that as 28 times quantity 4x minus 2 raised to the 6th power. Probably the best way to write that answer. Continuing with problem number 4, you'll see once again I have a composite function. I have the cosine of 5x. Once again, when I take the derivative, I'm going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So, I take the derivative of my outside function, derivative of cosine of x, be careful, it's going to be negative sine of the same thing. So negative sine of 5x, only thing I need to do here is multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of 5x is 5. Again, you might want to rewrite this a little bit. I can write this as negative 5 sine of 5x. And at that point, I'm done. Next one. I have a sixth power function, I have an inside function, same thing as before, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside function, this is a sixth power expression, six times the coefficient of one gives me six. It's going to be the same value inside parentheses. And I'm dropping my exponent by one to five, but I have to remember the derivative of that inside function. Derivative of the inside function is going to be 8x minus 5. You may want to multiply the 8x minus 5 by 6. Uh, in that case, you could write that as 48x minus 30, the quantity, times 4x squared minus 5x plus 9. All of that taken to the fifth power. Probably a slightly better form of your answer, although this form is also acceptable. And my sixth example here, once again, I'm taking the sine of an inside function. Derivative of sine is cosine of the same thing. 
now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Uh, the derivative of the inside function, of course, is going to be 6x minus 9. You may want to move this out in front just so it's clear that you're not taking the cosine of this entire statement here. Uh, essentially, this is going to be the cosine. Well, actually, it's going to be the quantity 6x minus 9 times the cosine of 3x squared minus 9x plus 7. Now, for my final three examples, I'm going to admit these are a little bit more challenging than the previous examples I did. But if you can do these, you are a champion at the chain rule. So first example here, it's a reciprocal. I want to write this using an exponent. So I'm going to write this as 2x to the fifth minus 4x plus 3 to the negative 1 power. Now I'll apply the power rule. Exponent times coefficient of 1 gives me negative 1. Time is the original function. And I'm going to drop my power by 1. So that's going to be to the negative second power. And now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the inside function is going to be 10x to the fourth minus 4. And at that point, I'm done. Various different ways I could write this. I could rewrite this as 10x to the fourth minus 4, probably negative possibly distribute that as well over 2x to the fifth minus 4x plus 3 to the second power. Again, those are really equivalents, but you could write that in either setup. Second example here. This is a sign to the fourth of the quantity 5x minus 3. Okay? I'm much more comfortable writing this thing as the entire quantity being taken to the fourth power. Now I think it's a little bit easier to see the power rule. So I'm taking some value to the fourth power. I go through my power rule. It's going to be four times the same thing. So sine of 5x minus 3. And then I'm going to drop my power by 1. When I drop my power by 1, that's going to be to the third power. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Notice the derivative of the inside function is going to be cosine of the same thing. And now I'm going to have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. That inside function, of course, is the 5x minus 3. Its derivative is equal to 5. And so there's my final multiplication. Now, might you want to rearrange this a little bit? Yeah, I would probably multiply the 4 and the 5 together, and I would get 20. And then you've got your final derivative. Okay, again, pretty challenging, but if you can do that, you're going to knock out any chain rule problem. And finally, this is probably the super bonus, but I've got 1 over the sine of 5x. Some of you may know 1 over sine uh, can also be written as cosecant of 5x, except we don't know how to find the derivative of cosecant. So this is going to allow us to do that. Um, first of all, I'm going to write this as an exponent. It's going to be sine of 5x. My quantities can be taken to the negative 1 power. So now you can see I have something being taken to the negative 1 power. I can follow the power rule here. Power rule says that I'm going to have negative 1 times the sine of 5x. And I drop my power by 1. That goes to negative 2. But I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So I have that. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of sine is going to be cosine of the same thing. So cosine of that same 5x. And now I have to take the derivative of my second inside function, that 5x that I have there. And the derivative of 5x, of course, is 5. And so I get this. Now, I can rewrite this in various ways. First of all, I would multiply the negative 1 into 5, and I get negative 5. Um, cosine of 5x, it'll leave in my numerator. In my denominator, I'm going to move my sine of 5x to the negative 2 to my denominator. That's going to be sine of 5x squared. 
And just to make this a little bit more clear, since it's sine of 5x squared, I'm going to rewrite it like this. Remember that sine over cosine is equal to tangent, which means that cosine over sine is equal to cotangent. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 5 times the cotangent. And again, the cotangent coming from this right here, cotangent of 5x, and all of that is over the sine of 5x. Okay? Now, final thing here that I could do, if I wanted to write this all out using the same values, we all know that the sine of 5x is also the same thing as the cosecant. Well, 1 over the sine of 5x is the same thing as the cosecant of 5x. So I'm going to write my final answer here as negative 5 times, I'm going to change this to the cosecant of 5x, and then I have my cotangent of 5x. So interestingly here you can see, at least in a sense, the derivative of the cosecant function is actually equal to a cosecant times a cotangent, and that is your final answer.